Welcome. It's so lovely to have you back here at Thomas Textiles, Nicola. Well, it's lovely to be back. It's lovely to have, to have, have the invitation to show here in Newcastle again. So here we are with Spirits in the Sky. Two years worth of work, mostly on the west coast of Ireland. Yeah, most of the work is based on time I've spent um, doing residencies on the coast of County Kerry, which is the southwestern tip of Ireland, uh, which juts out into the Atlantic Sea. Um, I've had the fortune to be able to stay in the crofters' cottages, which have been converted into studios. And uh, the project um, at that uh, location is called Kill Reading. And it's, a, it's a, an amazing uh, opportunity for artists to go and be really right on the raw edge of nature. So I collect a lot of material by drawing and sketching when I'm there um, and prepare drawings somewhat along the lines of the pieces that are in the exhibition, the chalk drawings. And from those I work in my studio in Clare, building up a body of work that's, um, I suppose, inspired by that location. Um, I'm living inland, so I don't, I don't live right next to the sea, so uh, a lot of the work that I do is inspired by visits to the coast um, of, of Ireland, and mainly the west coast. So the process that I work on is that I dye the cloth initially with a deep uh, indigo bluey black uh, dye, and I'm using raw calico, unbleached calico, a very thick uh, calico. That's the fabric that's often used um, in upholstery. But um, my process is to dye it and then to work gradually through lots and lots of layers with silk screen printing images from my original drawings. So my dra drawings, I use them to make um, to transfer those onto a silk screen with um, photographic process so using a light sensitive emulsion and a, and a UV light bed. So once I've got the screens, a series of silk screens made up with the images, they might be birds, they might be uh, flowers, they might be wave patterns, they might be uh, plants, I can then start working onto the fabric. And I actually use a process called discharge printing and colour illumination. So that's a transfer process where the dyes that are in the uh, printing pigments are exchanging with the background dye that's in the cloth that I've done the fabric in. So the actual colour um, really pregnates the cloth um, right the way through. It's a little bit akin to fresco painting, which would have been an early influence on my work. I spent a good bit of time in Italy when I was first training as an artist. And I love those dry surfaces and the powdery kind of textural feeling of the images. And uh, that influenced my interest in screen printing on fabric. Plus being able to work on a large scale um, previous to that, I've done a lot of work with textural work with embroidery, hand and machine stitch. Um, and when I started printing, I, I kind of I missed the qualities that you can get with embroidery and uh, embellishing the surface. So I decided once I became more competent with the screen printing and the painting of pigments, that I would try to integrate the processes I'd learned as an embroiderer. So a lot of the surface has little pieces of um, screen printed paper, found papers or handmade Japanese paper I use which is quite fabric like and I tease these bits of paper apart and actually machine stitch them into the background cloth. After I've done that, which can take some days, um, I, I will do a lot of hand stitching. I also use a process of wax resist in some of the pieces where the chanting is used to put hot wax over the dyed background and then I use a gold uh, pigment over the top of that. When it's dry, you remove the wax using a hot iron. Um, so this is a number of different processes. Um, the, use, the use of the discharge colours has the downside is that it's actually very unpleasant toxic material to work with, so I have to work with a gas mask, which is not very pleasant, but for health reasons it's, it's necessary. And um, the work also has to be washed, dried, and often reprinted a number of times to get the depth of colour because the washing tends to take the colour out of it a bit so it's kind of a gradual process of building up the layers of colour. <coughs> I think the advantage of that though is you can get a sense of three dimensional space in the work. Uh, even though it's obviously a 2D work of art, it's only on a thin piece of fabric, I like to feel the 
three-dimensional space and looking at the skies and looking at the sea, that feeling of, you know, um, enormous uh, three-dimensional kind of space, which you can see in a lot of the work in this show, because particularly it's, it's about the sky and about um, air currents. Um, so these two pieces in particular, I focused a lot of my attention on the texture and the work of the skies, and influenced greatly by the watercolours of um, Turner. Um, there's a collection of beautiful watercolours in the National Gallery of Ireland, which are on display once a year. And uh, I, uh, I go as a, it's like a pilgrimage in January when the light is low, the, the paintings are on show, and I spend a lot of time looking at the, the beautiful, delicate, iridescent sort of colours that you can get. And then I came back into my studio and I tried with my processes to try to recreate that sense of you know, the, the freedom and the energy of the movement uh, of both water, wind, clouds, rain, you know, the elements really. So in this piece I contrasted the sky very s strongly with a lot of intense detail and embroidery. So this is very tactile and very tangible and very figurative. Uh, and in this part, I tried to get that feeling of complete contrast. So the sky is in enormous void, and it's changing in its ephemeral, and it has a completely different quality to what's on the ground. Then this piece was one step further again, and I let go of the more figurative elements of the birds and reduced it down to just a very smallest hint of birds in flight coming across the sea here. So I suppose I'm trying to capture the feeling of how it is to be really held in those elements and um, to bring that raw energy into the work. Uh, so the pieces take maybe two or three weeks to make one piece, but essentially I'm trying to capture a, a really instant passing moment in time. And Nicola, you're back with birds. You don't move away from birds. What is it, 30 odd years of drawing, watching, painting, screening birds? I don't, I haven't completely moved away from birds, but I have moved away from them as being the obvious subject matter. Um, to be honest, it's the bird movement, it's always been the movement that I'm more interested in. I'm, I don't see myself as, as an ornithological painter as such, um, and that's not really my aim. I guess I'm using them as a vehicle to express uh, something that's quite a lot bigger than the birds themselves, and that's my personal feeling of wanting to have the freedom of three-dimensional movement and uh, the idea is that the birds are supposed to represent my inner feelings um, but I'm looking at the world around them as much as I'm looking at the birds and, and particularly in the last few years I've focused in very much on sea and, and uh, water and the movement of water and more recently particularly in this show on the sky the backdrop uh, or I suppose the stage in which the, the drama is happening and trying to capture the, the skies. I mean, the skies in Ireland and the light are so dramatic and so distinctive. Um, I think I'm more and more drawn to the skies. So though you do see birds in the work, my interest in them is, 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 is it's kind of secondary, if you can imagine what I mean by that. I mean, I do watch birds. I have, you know, once you start, when you're an ornithologist, you'll always be one. You can't really stop looking at the birds and, and quite, uh, yeah. Their their environment is, is 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 the important bit, and how they interact with that is the important thing, really, rather than the birds themselves. You know. Where are you going to head in your work? Very hard to know. Uh, I think more abstract, probably less figurative. I want to achieve uh, something that sort of really captures even more the, the essence without necessarily having to have a strong reference to the figurative. That's quite a daunting thing to do. I mean, I don't know whether I would ever really go completely abstract. Um, but that, that's the direction I'm heading. How far it will go, I, don't, I really don't know. Uh, and I think being wanting to be more uh, minimal, less marks, um, something maybe purer and more refined 
is what I, you know, so that it's like a hint of something rather than overkill. I think that's the direction in 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 general terms that, that I'd like to go. Uh, I doubt that I'm going to change the subject matter a lot, but I think it's the way I'm going to interpret it will will change. Um, but a lot of these things they come from inside, so. If, it, 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 it's, it's to do with your own state of mind, really. If I have more clarity of thought, if I can be more succinct, um, then the work will become more that, that way, I think. Less clutter. Strip away the uh, excess and try to really focus in on the important things. Yeah, I, I look forward to being able to do some of that work. It's been such an honour over the last six years uh, to be able to look at your work and to show your work. So thank you for that Nicola, it's wonderful. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. It's a wonderful space and you know, it's a real privilege to show here and to have an opportunity to, to, to bring my work to Australia which has you know, only been possible thanks to you and Times Textile. So I think it's a good partnership.